something that uh, we have been discussing. Uh, that is mainly about, let's say, if I can put things in this simple way, pushing a little bit all this work that people are doing at let's say, research level, let's say to feed the industry. Okay, so I think we need to to think that and uh, don't forget that we are talking about real structures. Real structures is real world. If it's real world, someone is paying the maintenance of these structures. Okay? So perhaps what we want is for, to be <coughs> fully succeeded with this, uh, all this long work. And I hope that it continues for many years and changes some paradigms. Is pushing these mainly to the industry. Right? So we ended up to to elaborate a concept called Industry Innovation Days. So basically, it is an activity that aims to, as we reach to the end of the cost action, uh, put this in a, in a, in a good uh, way to present to, to the owners and authorities uh, of these structures. So just also brief, uh, introduction about the people that are responsible for this activity. It's myself, Jan Kohler, uh, as a leader of Working Group 4 and the Key Studies, Maria Limongeli as a leader of Working Group 5 in the Dissemination, Sebastian Hunt as uh, the big boss, and uh, we encourage also its involvement as a bit uh, also very sensitive to these issues of the industry. So. As always, I present just a brief uh, uh, overlook of this presentation. I will try to show you what is the objective. <coughs> then, based on this objective, what was the concept uh, that was elaborated uh, along some uh, conversations in this core group. Uh, I will present something called a dedicated workshop, special sessions, uh, in conference mainly, but uh, what is distinguishing in this uh, scope and also what we are having in terms of deliverables. So, of course, at workshops, special session, sessions, and deliverables, it's something that everyone knows, but I'm trying to show this in an uh, industry perspective. So, we are trying to innovate and uh, not in that classical approach of uh, conference uh, research spaces. So, let's try to, to be succeed. I will try to be succeed in the presentation and pass the message to you. So as the bottom line, okay, let me show you first my case study. This is not publicity, but I think it's important to understand with a case why this, let's say, motivated the concept of the industry day. So this is a bridge in Portugal, a very nice one, so a long span. Uh, there was a lot of work in this bridge. Uh, so. Mainly, there is a monitoring system with 400 sensors with data from 11 years. In addition to this information, there is also a very detailed model, a finite element model, that takes into account uh, <coughs> all the details in terms of geometry, enforcement, uh, characterization of the materials that were used in situ, a real construction time history. I show you, for example, I highlight the precision of the model in terms of geometry. Um, it was very detailed, you see that, for example, here is a profile of the bridge, and you see that it's not an horizontal bridge, that is a slight curvature along this long span, it was included, so all the type of simplifications were avoided, if the information is available. This was also included a soil simulation as well, so we put that in the finite element software. This is just an animation to show that also all the construction sequence since the first pile until the end of the lifetime that is expected to be 100 years was also simulated uh, numerically. So it is a quite comprehensive model. I have a, a collaboration they know that they say that in their opinion this is not a model, this is a kind of a virtual bridge embedded in a computer. So also I think in addition to the monitoring data this is also information, so it is also a value information. So if you get now the data and these results, uh, just briefly to show you that uh, it motivates to go further because as you can see the experiments and we see overlapping some results of the medical model during the construction phase in terms of strains, in this case during the loading test, the second graph for rotation, for curvatures of sections based on strain gauges, 
And also in terms of the long-term performance, I show here in the left uh, a time window of five years, the first five years, and we see that these results are quite uh, motivating to the person that, or the team that has been involved in this bridge since, uh, let's say, the installation of the first sensor until this stage, where you see that, in fact, if you look to this information, things had uh, an agreement <coughs> and to go further. But the question is now about uh, the end user is uh, the major highest in Portugal, Brazil, and they always ask me what I do with this, all this information. How I can use this uh, in a decision basis, as we are discussing here. So, as a second step, and this is now going indeed to the, our objective in the cost action, this is the framework that was developed in uh, Munich, maybe. I would like to thank you to Michael Farber, uh, Daniel Straub, and all the people because they helped me to fill this table at the time. So basically the idea is that now with all this information from the data, either monitor, infinite element model, additional information, we could try now <coughs> put this in a decision-making basis by considering several, let's say, inputs, box, where you can fill in in terms of about the knowledge of the decision context, about asset information, what are the objectives of all this work that was done based on the monitoring and the finite element, uh, what we are aiming to optimize, which I think is important from the owner perspective, because, okay, I can show that the results are very quite in agreement, but for them it's like saying yes and no, what I do. Um, and some other, uh, uh, what is collected on the information, and it's missing something in the top, which is the indicators and the uh, uh, what are the, the remedial actions that we want to do. So basically, this framework that is here was, let's say, officially launched in the context of this cost action as a prototype where the different case studies that we have in this cost action could try to standardize it as an input. So this input that I put here and I present is mainly for this bridge, for the zero bridge, but there are other structures, not only bridges, <coughs> that we are now trying to, to also to have uh, similar, let's say, uh, tables, but we are trying to, to show as a case studies uh, that could help in the future similar structures by using these examples. So therefore, this case studies aims to, and with this framework, and now in the industry perspective, um, help the owners to look this in a more uh, practical and what is the aim that they can, or the benefit, that can, they can extract. So, from this on, what we were discussing during these last weeks is that, uh, okay, some statements that we all agree, I think, SAJ has been uh, prog progressively and widely applied in civil engineering, so this is not a pitching cause. Nevertheless, uh, we keep trying to understand what is the value of SAJM, I think mainly from the owner perspective, what they can how they can save money is basically the question. And what we are doing here is about how to assess these, these value, these costs, and therefore uh, to improve decision based on a more cost efficient and reliable and safe strategies. Okay, this is in the memorandum more or less. So, but in this flow of this case study, it's like now with all this uh, framework that we presented before, could we try to give something a payback to the owners? That is the question. So, so the idea is basically jump or cost action into industry by means of this activity. So I show here mainly three key messages, I think, is what we aim with this activity is to strengthen the communication along the supply chain, okay? Since the people that are working in the office or installing sensors on the, on the field or the manufacturers of the sensors, until concessionaires and government authorities. And also, I think it's also that we are looking, or we are trying to address, is that we should also give evidence that uh, these case studies gives uh, 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 an output with a certain degree of maturity so that the owners get, in fact, confident about what we are presenting. And I think also, in the context of these industry innovation days, uh, this is uh, something that I like to stress a lot, is that we need to adapt our language that we normally use in the research domain, focusing mainly on the owners and local authorities. 
So we need to understand their language and try to uh, approach them so we can, in fact, succeed in passing and jumping these, all these work and information to them. And ultimately, I think the society in general benefits because all of us are societies. So I think if we close this, <coughs> this supply chain, we are getting a sustainable uh, market where we can see that SHM is, in fact, effectively used by the society. At the same time, we are continuously getting new knowledge, new knowledge, new data, let's say new data, new research, more knowledge, and so I think it's uh, something that for me personally makes sense that not forget that at the end of all this work, we need in fact to give answers to the owners of these structures, okay? Which is perhaps something that in my experience it's missing in the time. So the question now is how to trigger this jam? Not to do it, trigger. So because I'm not aiming that we are doing, we will do all the work in doing this activity. But as a first step, I think uh, we agreed in this group that we should have, what well, makes sense, that we should have a dedicated workshop, mainly targeting uh, the end users of this supply chain. So basically, today we have here uh, an audience that is research based, perhaps the majority, but in this workshop. Let's suppose that we are today in that workshop. In that side should be there uh, <coughs> people from the executive boarding of uh, owner or concessionaires, local authorities, and try to get them more interested on this uh, on this theme. Okay, so we think that we should organize a dedicated workshop. Also, in parallel, <coughs> uh, special sessions in suitable conference. So. Uh, <coughs> the majority of the conference, uh, all of them are uh, research oriented, but there are some that also include a more practical and a more uh, tangible uh, language that it's more accessible for this uh, final audience. So basically the idea will be in the context of this innovation industry, industry innovation base, should be trying to, for these two type of events, elaborate uh, a piece of paper for each case study that we could try to translate as much as possible all this work about uh, maximum likelihood, the Asian matrix, covariance, whatever, to something that is related to what they understand, costs. Okay? So I think this is the, it will be the main push that these uh, people in this uh, that will try to, to alert you when preparing a, a work for this event. So in terms of the first part, the workshop, we thought that should be and makes all sense to do it in an in in industrial partner. Because <coughs> at the moment, and if I'm not wrong, all the workshops were based on a university or a research sector paper. So, But we have some industrial partners in the construction. I think it makes sense try to engage with them and them to be, let's say, hosting this workshop. So mainly to get their feedback, okay? I think it's quite important when we are doing something with a certain target, listen to people that are in the target, okay? Um, I think also that uh, it will be very good for the people that are responsible for the case studies. It's like a test, okay? Uh, when you have people that decide that need to make uh, make decisions, perhaps is a good way in this workshop to see what are their feedback to your case study. Okay? Like uh, checking if you are going the right way to communicate with them, not only the audience that will be in the workshop, but in general. Uh, and also, in the time frame that we have, we thought that perhaps this could be a, a preparatory validation work in a more uh, control the environment because it would be something in a workshop, so I think that we could invite people that could be a first step when you are going to present this work in, a, in the special sessions suitable for this scope. It is the second activity that we are planning. So basically, for this workshop, the concept and the language used should be practical and objective. Okay? Try to <coughs> not to forget, but minimize those 
sections that we talk about all those mathematical and statistical issues and try to, to push more uh, informative uh, information for these end users. So this will be uh, something that distinguished from the, the other, uh, this current workshop, for example. In terms of conference, as a second step, uh, we were seeing what were the uh, suitable conference. So basically, there are two that I think we agree that in the time frame makes sense. It's YAPS. The next one is in Nantes. The following year, there is another one in Portugal. Uh, and uh, in fact, this <coughs> conference and this organization, uh, it takes also into account uh, these practical perspectives of the management of civil engineering structures. So my experience when I read some papers of these uh, organizations is that they are quite uh, informative, less research-based in terms of uh, the, the explanation of the theories, which I think is very suitable to, to an audience like owners and authorities. Uh, we thought also that uh, we could always uh, get some marginal benefit from other conferences because there are other in parallel that are being organized and mainly these two, the European Workshop in Manchester next year and Japan's in Australia but as a, let's say uh, some marginal contribution so this really not the, the, from the scope of the Industry Innovation Day is so responsible to be involved in this but at the end of this event perhaps you could also take some some benefit of some outputs that would be presented. But mainly the first two, so the YAPS in 2018 in Nantes and in Kimaraj uh, the following. So about this conference, <coughs> we have already planned and uh, I, I think all of you that have a case study received recently an email with an invitation to submit a, a paper in a special session where the title is why invest in ACHM for civil engineering infrastructure? So this, this title was, was carefully thought with some iterations. Chalked mainly if a owner or an authority <laughs> by chance is looking to these proceedings, they might like to, to read the, the answer to this question. So the idea is basically try to these case studies that we are working, show evidence of the benefit or not, but or not, we hope not. Uh, but clearly, saying a kind of, uh, if possible, or as much as possible, something like an answer, black and white. Um, as I said, the target audience will be owners and authorities. We are currently elaborating a, a list of uh, <coughs> potential interest, but mainly from owners and authorities. So we will address uh, an invitation to attend this special session. So once again, for those that are interested, please keep in mind that the audience will be mainly, and we hope that will be mainly owners and authorities. Uh, and for this special session, we are mainly, as I have already said, uh, focusing on applications on full-scale structures. Because as a owner, uh, is, is what they want. It's, it's not seeing work in the lab. It's mainly seeing this in the real world. So, for this special session, the case studies that are being addressed in this cost action are naturally uh, invited to participate, but if there are more people that think that it's an opportunity to them to participate, I, although they are not a case study formally in the cost action, please take into account this. Uh, and also something that as an innovation, <coughs> we thought that perhaps could be good to try to engage these people in joint paper. Because when you present a case study, it's a real structure. It's a real structure that is a owner or a concessionaire that is responsible for that structure. So in my opinion, it makes all sense that not only to be in the audience, owners and concessionaires, but for these papers where we have case studies, you, you as a promoter of your case study, would formally invite them to participate in the preparation of this paper, but not only in the paper, but also, for example, in the oral presentation. For example, I thought that, and I will try to do this with Brisa from Portugal, in the first part of the presentation, we could invite the executive board in just to show what is the problem that they are addressing, what they expect, what they want, and then a the second part that you present your case study, like a, 
question and answer between both, but you present to the audience. So I think it's quite interesting, it's more lively, and not so monotonic, let's say, in terms of presentation. Uh, I'd like to highlight that uh, the deadline for the submission uh, is 5th of November, so I don't know, it's some few days, but it's only the abstract for now. So, and you could address these abstracts to these emails, so <laughs> uh, you receive it from uh, formal invitation by email, but if for chance there are people that want and they are not included in the case studies of this construction, please keep these emails and send your, uh, your uh, uh, proposal. We will be very happy for that. Uh, what about deliverables? So we are expecting that this uh, event might last during until the end of the action. So as you can see, there will be a workshop, two special sessions. This is not something that will be point in time. It's something that will uh, have some steps. So as a deliverables, uh, I would like to promote an official video for this event where we could, uh, let's say, do a <coughs> small time history in the development of these case studies. Something very short, three, five minutes, because my experience tells me that the people that decide things in companies don't have more than three, five minutes to see a video. So don't, don't be more than that. Uh, <coughs> also something that I'm looking, and this is something that I'm saying even for the core group, I didn't mention, but I'm exploring some official channels at the European Commission level. They have some special events in terms of European Industry Day. Also, I've been looking, and perhaps we could also try to uh, engage in these, uh, <coughs> in these channels of communication, because I think they are very efficient to spread these, these type of activities. There is one now in 2018, in February. There is another one in 19, I think. Some question marks because I think we need to discuss this in the core group, but I leave here for consideration. So just to tell you that for those interested to engage in this activity, we will try to maximize as much as possible the visibility of the, the case studies. Uh, and also something as an ultimately goal that uh, uh, I think makes all sense that this might become a reality is that at the end of the cost action, and depending on the outcome of these case studies, how far we can go, uh, how informative they might be, the, the results, we are already preparing, uh, at the moment it's myself and Professor Helmut from uh, Vienna, a technical recommendation based on these outcomes of the case studies, mainly with the objective <coughs> Uh, and this is my experience, to support uh, owners and concessionaires or people that are responsible for the management of these real structures to renegotiate the terms of the contracts of the maintenance. Because this is the main thing that is missing, I think, in this supply chain, is that with such work, I think it's so valuable at the, uh, the European level, with such excellence that we are doing, Definitely, it makes all sense to gather all this information in a very concise and objective uh, document as a technical recommendation with the stamp of the European Commission. And we could put in the website saying that as experts from all the Europe, we are here, we, as together, together we are stronger, <coughs> saying that in fact, and based on evidence of these studies, it should be allowed or be advised to allow that uh, if a structure has some kind of uh, additional data, mainly monitoring, uh, local authorities should be more sensitive and try to allow some flexibility in the planning of the uh, maintenance of the structures. Because this is exactly what the owners want. If not, we are delaying, I think, for since I do research in this area, uh, we are always postponing, delaying a little bit an effective change of the paradigm in terms of asset management. So we need definitely, with such technical recommendation, with European Commission stamp and publicizing our cost action website, that in fact we give evidence as a whole, all these people, with all the signature of everyone, that in fact we were, as far as possible, show evidence 
that uh, this is the, one of the correct ways to go further in terms of asset management and therefore a more proactive approach rather than a passive and a reactive, which I think makes all sense. So, and that's all. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed.